Yo, this is Retro Wolf 88 and welcome to GameCube Gallery episode number two. GameCube Gallery is a new series that I started recently on the channel where we will take a look at the GameCube library one game at a time because this is one of my favorite consoles of all time and it is a console that is increasing in popularity among collectors and for a good reason because there are plenty of fantastic games on the GameCube, ton of hidden gems, and I want to share with you all the knowledge and information of this game library one game at a time. So in GameCube Gallery Episode 2, we are going to take a look at one of my favorite 3D platformers of all time on the GameCube, and that is SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom is a fantastic 3D platformer based on the popular Nickelodeon cartoon series SpongeBob SquarePants. It's widely considered to be a hidden gem on the GameCube as well as one of the best SpongeBob games ever made. So sit back, relax. If you haven't subscribed, please be sure and subscribe so you can join the Retro Wolf 88 family and so you don't miss future videos in the GameCube Gallery series. So let's take a look at SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom on the Nintendo GameCube. I absolutely love SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. I remember playing this game back in the day whenever I was a teenager and I first got in the GameCube. I thought that it was an amazing game and even today I still enjoy it. It holds up even today and it is a lot of fun and it's a game that a lot of people don't really know about honestly. Um, it's sort of a hidden gem in my eyes. Now, I want to begin this video by giving you a brief rundown of the developer behind Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom, and that is Heavy Iron Studios. And I also want to talk about the publisher of Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom, and that is THQ. Heavy Iron Studios is an American video game developer based out of Los Angeles, California. They were founded in 1999. They were owned by THQ from 1999 to 2009, and from 2009 to now, they have become their own independent studio. Heavy Iron Studios have been involved with several licensed games from properties such as Disney, Pixar, Nickelodeon, Warner Brothers, 20th Century Fox, and UFC across several consoles and generations. Some of the most notable games that Heavy Iron Studios developed, of course, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, but they also developed the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights, The Incredibles, The Incredibles Rise of the Underminer, Ratatouille Up, Epic Minky 2, The Power of Two, Family Guy, Return to the Multiverse, Disney Infinity, WALL-E, UFC Personal Trainer, and one that doesn't quite fit in with the rest, Evil Dead, Hell to the King. It's pretty safe to say with Heavy Iron Studios having their hands dipped in all these extremely popular properties and, and having all these licensed games under their belt that they were pretty successful. As back in those days, licensed games were pretty popular. Now THQ, on the other hand, they were a beast of a publishing company, and back in those days, they published tons and tons of video games. They began as a company as both a game developer and a publisher back in 1990 in California. And they became well known for many internally published games, as well as externally licensed published games from big companies such as Disney, DreamWorks, Pixar, Nickelodeon, WWE, and many more, which all led to THQ becoming one of the largest video game publishers in the world at that period. Now, THQ had many ups and downs throughout their history as a company, but ultimately they had their downfall in 2012 to 2013, as many of its studios and IPs were bought and merged into other video game companies. Now, there are a multitude of reasons and information explaining what led to the company's downfall and it's quite the story. Now while I won't be going over all that information in that story today, I will leave links in the description below for several articles that you can read if you want to get the history of THQ and their highs and their lows and what ultimately led to them having to sell all their IPs and sell off their uh, trademark company name. With that being said, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. The THQ trademark and name was purchased by Nordic Games 
and they are now known as THQ Nordic. And THQ Nordic is making a huge comeback for the name THQ because THQ Nordic, they are becoming one of my favorite publishers on the Nintendo Switch because they're, pu they're purchasing IPs and games left and right and releasing just tons and tons of awesome games on the Nintendo Switch and other consoles and bringing back old games such as Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy, uh, they purchased the Time Splitters IP, Red Faction. They've got a lot of really cool stuff going on. So the THQ name is making a comeback through THQ Nordic. I'm going to quickly list off some of the more notable THQ published games, specifically for Nintendo consoles prior to the release of SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom in 2003. All right, let me read from my list here. So for the NES, so again, these are THQ published games prior to the release of SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom in 2003, notably on Nintendo consoles. This is not an all-inclusive list. For the NES, we have Home Alone, James Bond Jr., Peter Pan and the Pirates, Where's Waldo, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, Swamp Thing. For the Super Nintendo, we have Home Alone 2, four Ren and Stimpy games. All start with the title, The Ren and Stimpy Show. We have Buckaroos, Vidiots, Fire Dogs, and Time Warp. And we also have Wayne's World. For the Game Boy, we have Desert Strike, Jungle Strike, Urban Strike, The Lost World Jurassic Park, for the Game Boy Color, we have Rugrats, Time Travelers, Toy Story 2, Croc 1 and Croc 2, Tomb Raider, Monsters, Inc., SpongeBob, Legend of the Lost Spatula. For the Game Boy Advance, we have Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase, SpongeBob SquarePants, Super Sponge, The Fairly Odd Parents Enter the Cleft, Hey Arnold the Movie, Sonic Advance 1 and 2, Banjo-Kazooie, Grunty's Revenge, and so many more. THQ really went crazy on the Game Boy Advance, and there are a ton of titles I didn't even list off. For the Nintendo 64, we have Nuclear Strike 64, Road Rash 64, Rugrats Scavenger Hunt, Destruction Derby 64, Rugrats in Paris the Movie, Aiden Chronicles the First Mage, Scooby-Doo Classic Creep Capers. For the GameCube, we had Big Mother Truckers, Hot Wheels Velocity X, MX Superfly, Red Faction 2, and Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy. Again, these are just some of the games that THQ published prior to the release of SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. There were actually a ton of games that I did not list off, including a ton of sports games, a ton of wrestling games, a ton of games for non-Nintendo consoles, and even after SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, THQ continued to publish game after game until they ultimately went down as a company. So THQ was a mega publisher back in the day and now THQ Nordic is becoming a mega publisher again except without all the licensed games. Now let's get into some information about SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom was released in North America on October 31st 2003 for the Nintendo GameCube, Sony PS2, and Microsoft Xbox. And I think it had an MSRP of $59.99 when it first came out back in 2003. Um, but I can't say that with 100% certainty. Now here, here are a few uh, interesting facts about the game I was able to dig up. There was actually a pretty decent amount of unused content that didn't make it to the final game. And I'll leave a link in the description down below to the cutting room floor page if you want to check out some of the unused content and pretty cool stuff that they found in the game's code. Um, another cool thing about the game is that the fastest speed run is 44 minutes and 41 seconds. And you can watch this insane speed run on speedrun.com and I'll leave a link to that in the description down below as well. There was also a side-scrolling platformer version of SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom that was released on the Game Boy Advance. I've never played it, but I've heard that it's actually a pretty decent side-scrolling platformer, so I may have to check that out at some point. Now, another cool fact about SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom is it was received very well. It actually won the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Award for favorite video game. So that's pretty big. Um, and then you've got a Metacritic.com score for SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, a average critic score of 71 out of 100 based on 10 critic reviews. Uh, the critic scores range anywhere from 46 on the low end all the way up to 90 on the high end. I honestly don't see how anybody could give this game a 46. That is abysmally low in this game. If if I, I don't like putting a score to game, but me personally, if I were to put a score to this game, I believe I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10, which is a very solid score. Now this game was far more accepted by the users as the user score on Metacritic is much higher at 8.2 out of 10 
and that's based on 49 user reviews. Many of the reviews being in the last six years, which shows that this is a great example of a game that became a cult classic and total hidden gem among games. Now let's talk about the sales for SpongeBob SquarePants file for Bikini Bottom. So here are the North American sales for the game across all the various consoles. So the GameCube version sold roughly 740,000 copies. The PlayStation 2 version sold roughly 1.08 million copies. And the Xbox version sold roughly 450,000 copies. So as, as, you would, as would make sense, PlayStation 2 version sold the best. GameCube version sold the second best. Microsoft Xbox version sold the third best. Now honestly, I would have expected the GameCube version to sell the worst, considering the GameCube technically didn't sell that well. So I was a little surprised to see that. But then again, this is a game that just, you know, it, it fits on a Nintendo console. It really does. The game sold well. I mean, those are those are pretty good sales figures for a, a licensed SpongeBob SquarePants game. And it's because of that critical reception and because it is actually a really good 3D platformer that it sold well and the fact that spongebob was super popular back in those days now for all you collectors out there on the gamecube there's also a player's choice version in addition to the black label version um so if you're going for a complete complete collection then you want to be on the lookout for the player's choice version as well let's talk about the price now for the game kind of where it's looking at for the gamecube version specifically currently at the time of this recording pricecharting.com has spongebob squarepants battle for the bikini bottom listed at an average of 15 dollars loose 27 dollars complete or $45 brand new. Now I looked at some of the eBay current listings at the time of this recording, the prices are kind of all over the place. I'm seeing it anywhere from $24 complete to $67 complete, which is outrageous. Looking at the sold listings on eBay, I'm seeing anywhere from $20 to $30. Please don't ever pay $67 complete for this game. Now eventually it may get there, it may get to that price, but right now it's not, so don't get ripped off by people on eBay. I have noticed that the price is slowly increasing on SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, so if you collect for the GameCube or honestly the PS2 or the Xbox as well, I would recommend picking this game up sooner rather than later, because I think the price is gonna continue to go up because of the fact that it's sort of a cult classic and a hidden gem, and a lot of people really, really love this game. Now let's get into my sort of review slash impressions of the actual game itself and what I think about it as a video game in terms of fun. This is such a fun 3D platformer. It's one of my favorites and it's a game that you should not skip. Don't let the fact that it's a licensed game fool you. Don't let the fact that it's a SpongeBob game fool you. This game is a quality game and it's a lot of fun. I think for all ages of gamers. Now, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom is a 3D platformer. Think of uh, Super Mario Sunshine, games along that vein where you're exploring a large 3D environment, dodging obstacles, platforming all over the place, beating enemies, trying to satisfy particular goals and collect a ton of collectibles throughout the level. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom takes place over the course of 10 huge worlds that you get to explore, including various bonus areas. There are a lot of different enemy types to fight. They're all really fun to fight and they all have their own specific weaknesses and strengths. There are boss fights. There's a lot of variety to the gameplay and a lot of variety to the environments in the game. You start off in SpongeBob's house and then you end up outside of SpongeBob's house and you go to various areas from the show like Jellyfish Fields, Goo Lagoon, Bikini Bottom, Rock Bottom. There are a lot of different places that you can go downtown Bikini Bottom and everyone feels different and everyone has different enemies. Every environment has different obstacles. Um, there are a lot of different collectibles to collect. There are of course golden spatulas are your main collectible you're trying to collect throughout the game. You're also trying to collect dirty socks that uh, Patrick has lost that you can gift him to get more golden spatulas. There are also shiny objects scattered around all over the place. You also get them from defeating enemies and you can use shiny objects to unlock uh, different areas and different worlds. Uh, you can use it to unlock shortcuts. You can also give shiny objects to Mr. Krabs to get golden spatulas from him as well because we all know how greedy Mr. Krabs is. Now, if you're a fan of the cartoon, which I am because I grew up during that era and I watched SpongeBob a lot, and honestly, SpongeBob is really funny. It's a really funny, well-written cartoon with a lot of 
hidden innuendos in there for adults as well. But if you're a fan of, car of the cartoon, you're going to like this game even better. It has a lot of that classic SpongeBob humor in it. Some of the dialogue is absolutely hilarious. The story is hilarious and nonsensical. It's like Bikini Bottom is getting taken over by robots. And SpongeBob and Patrick think that they caused it. And it's, it's just this whole mess that they're trying to figure out. The environments are a lot of fun to explore. Some of the different things you have to do to get the golden spatulas are a lot of fun. It could be anything from defeating groups of enemies to beating a boss to navigating an obstacle course. There's even sections where you bungee jump. You bungee jump from a bungee cord hooked to SpongeBob's underwear to uh, try to do different things to get golden spatulas. There are some golden spatulas that are just hidden in the world that you have to navigate to. There are some puzzles in the game every now and then that you have to solve to, to get a golden spatula. It's a lot of variety. And in addition to all that, you have three different characters you can play as. You can play as SpongeBob, you can play as Patrick, and you can play as Sandy. All three of them have their own different abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. Patrick can pick up and throw things. He can also eat fruit that does various things. Sandy has her lasso she can use to, to uh, rope swing and grab enemies from a distance and grab items from a distance. Uh, she can also glide. SpongeBob, of course, has his bubble moves that he can use. So there's a lot of variety among the three different characters. Some enemies are easier to defeat with certain characters than others. There's some golden spatulas that you can only get with certain characters and some secrets that you can only find with certain characters. You can only switch between characters at a bus stop and bus stops will only allow you to switch to particular characters within certain areas. So a little bit of a limitation there, but you know what? It didn't bother me at all. Um, another thing I really like about this game is there's actually a sort of fast travel system. You can actually travel to any of the different areas from the menu as well as certain sub areas within the areas from the menu by selecting a particular golden spatula. So that's really cool because it doesn't require you to have to do a lot of backtracking and navigating through areas that you've already been through just to get to a new area. So I like that a lot. The graphics look really good. The music is really good. The gameplay and the controls are all solid. The game is just a lot of fun. It's a joy from beginning to end. And if you haven't experienced this hidden gem of a 3D platformer, I cannot recommend it enough. Whether you get it on the GameCube, the PS2, or the Xbox, you need to pick this game up and try it out if you like 3D platformers. If you don't like 3D platformers, then you probably won't like this game, but I'm a fan of 3D platformers. I've always loved 3D platformers, and I always will, and this just so happens to be one of my favorites on the GameCube. Thank you for watching GameCube Gallery Episode 2, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. If you missed Episode 1, Episode 1 was on Go Go Hyper Grind from Atlas, and I'll leave a link in the description down below for Episode 1 if you haven't seen it please go check it out. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure and hit that like button. It helps out the channel quite a bit. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you consider it to be a hidden gem? Is it one of your favorite 3D platformers of all time? Let me know what you think about the game. Let me know what you think about the GameCube Gallery video series. If you still have not subscribed at this point, Hit that subscribe button and join the Retro Wolf 88 family. And also, so you don't miss future videos in the GameCube Gallery series. I already know what game that I'm going to talk about in Episode 3, but I'm going to leave that a surprise. Now, before we go, I want to give a shout out to my editor, because his he has sort of rebranded and restarted his YouTube channel, Wolfellow. And I will leave a link to his channel in the description down below. And he, at the time of this recording, he has one video out, and it is about Titanfall 2, which is a fantastic game. Probably one of the best first-person shooter campaigns that you can play in this generation. And he did a fantastic video on the game. It's short, sweet, to the point. He made a lot of good points. He threw in some humor in there. So please be sure and check his channel out and support him. Leave a like on his video, leave a comment, subscribe to his channel so that you don't miss future videos that he releases as well. Until next time, folks, keep playing games and having a good time, and I will see you in the next video. Later.